City of Pacifica for March 4th, 2019. Roll call, please. Commissioner Rubenstein. Present. Vice Chair Clifford. Present. Chair Campbell. Here. Commissioner Niblin. Here. Commissioner Kraske. Here. Commissioner Gordon is absent. Thank you. All right, uh, salute to the flag. Commissioner Kraske, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Kraske. All right, on to, uh, so we do not, okay, approval of the order of agenda. Commissioner Neblin. I move that we approve the order of the agenda. Commissioner Clifford. I'll second that. Had a motion and a second, please vote. And that passes unanimously. We don't need to approve minutes. We don't have a designation of a liaison to the city, next city council meeting, so on to oral communications. This portion of the agenda is available to the public to address the planning commission on any issue within the subject matter of jurisdiction of the commission that is not on the agenda tonight. The time allowed for any speaker would be three minutes. Uh, you'd fill out a card in the back, bring it to staff, and you would have three minutes to discuss. And again, this is for something that is not on the agenda tonight. If you do have something that's on the agenda tonight, fill out a card, bring it up, and mark the number. I don't know if we're gonna have any speakers? Doesn't look like. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not. All right, onward to consent items. Uh, I don't see any, and continued public hearings would be the next thing. Let's see. All right, first up would be a specific plan for the construction of a three story, 3,643 square foot single family residence on a 5,618 square foot lot located at 327 Beaumont Boulevard. The recommended CEQA action is a class three categorical exemption and to approve as conditioned. Staff report, please. Good evening, I'm contract planner Ranu Agarwal. The project before you is the proposed construction of a three story, 3,643 square foot single family residence on a vacant 5,618 square foot lot at 327 Beaumont Boulevard. This project requires approval of a specific plan. The project site itself is a steeply sloping lot which slopes up from Beaumont Boulevard which is located to the site, uh, site's southwest site. The project was the subject of a planning commission hearing on June 4, 2018. At that hearing, the planning commission identified two items of interest requiring further analysis. This presentation focuses on those two items, which include uh, the identification of the location and accuracy of it, and preservation of two heritage trees on the site, which are a Monterey pine and a Monterey cypress. And second, the potential impact of the proposed development on the hillside when it is considered together with other residential developments in the vicinity, which is namely on 323 Beaumont Boulevard, uh, 325 Beaumont Boulevard and 300 Coral Ridge. Uh, so the locations are all up on the screen. The one with the orange boundary is the project site. Uh, in the process of further analysis, the applicant conducted and submitted a survey that clearly and accurately identified the location of the two heritage trees as being partially on the adjacent property at 329 Beaumont Avenue. The project de design has been revised for the preservation of these trees. The modification to the project design mainly includes setting back the retaining wall in the vicinity of the two trees by a distance of eight foot from the Monterey pine and seven foot from the Monterey cypress. Uh, based on the recommendation of the project arborist uh, report, uh, staff has included a condition of approval that no excavation shall occur closer than three times the diameter of the heritage trees. This condition will yield an additional one foot setback from the Monterey Cypress, which uh, staff believes is a feasible um, condition and uh, can be achieved. With regard to the hillside stability, the applicant submitted an engineering inspection report, which is included as attachment F, which is packet, uh, 
which is page 60 of the uh, st uh, packet, which states that consideration of excavation activity at 300 Coral Ridge Drive and 323 Beaumont Boulevard is not necessary as they are not adjacent to the subject property and that the geotechnical conditions at the adjacent 325 Beaumont uh, would not uh, likely negatively impact construction at 327 Beaumont. But uh, given that uh, in staff analysis, uh, if the activity uh, on both sides or excavation on both sides which are adjacent to each other were to occur concurrently, because the two sites are indi engineered individually, they may impact the, uh, potentially impact the hillside. So staff has included uh, three conditions of approval, uh, which are up on the screen uh, to minimize impact on the hillside. They basically address uh, the communication that the applicants on 325 Beaumont and 327 Beaumont uh, applicants or developers uh, uh, should uh, have uh, to the maxi maximum extent practicable and that uh, there should be effort to coordinate the excavation and grading activities such that they don't un occur concurrently. And if that has to happen, the uh, engineer on 327 Beaumont has to, to the satisfaction of the building official, provide a letter that uh, that activity concurrently can occur safely. Uh, uh, with uh, regard to the specific uh, uh, plan uh, um, uh, that this project requires, uh, there are two findings and in staff assessment, both of those findings for the approval of the specific plan can be made as the building design uh, and largely the site design uh, are as proposed initially and were reviewed by the Planning Commission at June 4, 2018 hearing. This concludes staff presentation uh, and staff will be happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you. Questions for staff? <coughs> All right, Commissioner Neblin. <coughs> Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, so I was looking at the uh, conditions of approval numbers four through six, which you have up here on the screen, and it seemed like a good idea. I'm sort of curious about whether or not there's been any sort of preliminary outreach to the, uh, 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 to the um, developer at 325 Beaumont and uh, the extent to which uh, it actually is going to be practicable to get sort of cooperation, I guess, from the, uh, from the developer uh, at, of the 325 Beaumont project. Um, it's a, a little bit unusual to have a condition of approval, I guess, or maybe maybe it's not, that involves somebody who isn't the the, uh, the party to the um, mm -hmm. to the particular uh, conditions of approval that are being issued. So, just sort of curious about you know what kind of outreach has been done in that regard. Um, staff had provided the geotechnical reports and soil reports that were prepared for the 325 Beaumont site and the 323 Beaumont site also to the applicant for uh, analysis by their engineer to see whether there could be impacts. But uh, staff is not aware of the, uh, uh, the communication that the applicant themselves may have had with the developers of 325 Beaumont so far. But the, uh, the, current, the applicant for the current project that we're considering right now hasn't expressed any particular concerns about these, about these conditions? No, not yet. Okay. They haven't expressed concerns about these conditions, no. Thank you. We are actually not conditioning the development on 325 Beaumont through this project. The conditions are applicable on, on for 325. No, I get that. I, I, I know that there's, this isn't conditioned on the 325 project in particular, uh, you know, going forward, not going forward, how it goes forward. It's just that it's a, there's a requirement here that good efforts, best efforts, maximum extent practical efforts uh, be applied to coordinate with someone else who isn't party to these particular conditions. That was my mm -hmm. concern. Sure, and I think, uh, Commissioner <coughs> Niblin, we have uh, attempted to build in a fail-safe uh, in the event that there uh, is a breakdown or inability to communicate that this particular applicant itself needs to explain how the project can be constructed safely uh, without that coordination. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Clifford. Is, is there somebody from either building or engineering here today? I'm seeing somebody back there because my, my question revolves around not the the undeveloped lot 
on one side, but the developed lot next door. And there, we did get a petition with some concerns about how the, uh, the impacts of this development on the existing home that's next door in terms of excavation and such. I'd like to know what kind of protections are built into our, our building section to uh, make sure that the existing house is safe. <clears throat> I, I would suggest that perhaps the, the engineer for the project or designer for the project may be best to answer that question when they have an opportunity to speak rather than um, a city engineer. Okay, thank you. Okay, I don't see any more questions for staff. So at this point, I'm going to bring it to the developer, um, to the applicant. You can come up, present your project. You have 10 minutes. Uh, good evening, Commissioner. Thanks for letting me speak. My name is Derek. I'm um, representing the ICE Design. We're a designer for 327 Beaumont, and I'm, re I'm representing the owners and our firm. Um, um, I would like to start out. To, we're, we, don't, we don't have any concerns with the, um, the conditional approval. Um, that will be fine. We can work with the adjacent neighbor of 325 Beaumont. And to touch on that, um, I reach out to the owners of 325 Beaumont and the architects um, and, the, and the contractor. And from them, we have um, the plan, um, Renew's um, planner sent us a, a copy of the soil report, and they also sent us the plans and a copy of the soil report. That, to, to the extent that they're willing to work with us, um, our civil engineer that we hired actually has some um, some of uh, grading plans that were done to ensure on both sides. And to touch on the 325 side, we are working with them to on, on the design for the retaining wall that will save them a, a large amount of excavations and in terms of financing as well. It will save them a lot of money if they're willing to allow us to do, to, to cooperate and have to build this, uh, this wall between the two lot. And they're, they're on board and they're willing to work with us on that because that will give them a, a financial release on their side. And um, so we have a pretty confident um, working relationship with the 325 Beaumont. So I believe one of the conditions is it's, it's going to be met. And um, again, I, like I said, we have a, uh, a, put a shoring plan, a retainable plan that was done by a civil engineer. Um, unfortunately, he's not here today to answer any of the, the engineering questions, but he is proposing to do soil, uh, soldier pile walls that will be protected against the developed lot. And I have those plans with me. Unfortunately, I'm not a civil engineering. I don't have the extent of um, explaining these plans to you. But if we, um, I could, I'm happy to have for him to, to answer any questions in any type of letter form, emails, if, if, if there's any question regarding of the, uh, the plans that he conduct. And ahead of time, we, we prepare this. So if there's any question regarding of the, uh, the feasibility, uh, the safety of the uh, developed lot, and this will answer most of the questions. And um, I'm happy to answer any other questions you have. Thank you. So I have uh, one question just so you can explain it. Um, you mentioned that if you, you'll save the adjoining lot 325 a lot of funds if you if they allow you to build that retaining wall can you kind of explain that and, and why that's the case um and so there the civil engineers explained to us that um because with with the design with the soldier pile design that i have on my hand as a moment there are tremendous amount of soldier pile that appear that needs to be installed and we the property owner this reach out and have this assess to see if this it, how how much this will cost for him to have been built and this is close to a million dollars just to do the, the structural and in terms of that we spoke to the jason when we spoke to our engineers and he's like you know what if the jason neighbor willing to instead of them excavating it let us excavate we can we don't have to install that many soldier pile beam on their side so so then therefore save us money and they'll save us save them a lot of excavation amount as well 
Now, like I said, I, I'm not an engineer. I don't have that deep of information of how much he explained it, and I'm happy for him to a answer any questions you have in any type of letter form, and he can explain it better. But that's, that's part of the, uh, the agreement that we, we're trying to reach with our adjacent neighbor. And did you, in fact, reach it? Yeah, um, well, they want us to get through the design, design um, approval first, and, but he's on board. He's, you can see he, the project itself, it's, it's, been, it's been delaying, and uh, I believe some of it uh, due to financial issue. And he, he is on board, and he wants to see us to get the design approved, then move on and work with him on this. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay, I don't see any. So uh, stay close at this point. I'm going to open it up to the public. Uh, anyone wishing to speak on this item would fill out one of these cards in the back, and you'll have three minutes. I have two cards. Uh, Sharon Ryan would be the first, followed by Dr. Lawrence Sarah. Hi, I'm Sharon Ryan, and I live above uh, and around the project, and I have photographs if anyone like, would like to have those, and it shows all the properties, but um, after we had the last meeting in June, I talked to a lot of the neighbors, and a lot of the neighbors were concerned that the developer of this property, 327 Beaumont, had found out from the, at that meeting in June 4th that that property had been developed, and it, the whole hillside had come down, and he had he's still proceeding to go forward. And he was also the same man that started the project at 300 uh, Coral Ridge, which is right at the top of Gordon. And that was supposedly going to be a huge home, but it was also, some, one of the neighbors told me it was, it was uh, there two lots side by side, it was gonna be a nursing home in a residential neighborhood. And then when that got discovered by the city of Pacifica, he, he uh, left his partner. That's what I heard at the last meeting. Uh, and from some of the neighbors, and then he just left this terrible eyesore. And then now all the neighbors are very, very concerned about that retaining wall at 300 next door, because one of the contractors in the neighborhood went and looked at it. He said it didn't look like it was very sturdy to hold the hillside back. And I told him at the time, there's now going to be five properties built on that bluff. And the whole hillside is going to probably come down and we're on the top level and there's a lot of us on that top level that are very concerned because there's underground streams there and we feel that Dolger didn't build down to the bottom of the hill to 300 Coral Ridge because of that water coming down. It's coming down constantly and one of the neighbors across the street said, the big bobcat came down, tumbling down Gordon one time just from the water coming out, seeping out of that, that lot. So a lot of us are very concerned and they're right by um, 327, that 325 lot, they went way up into the hill and this man on Farallon, his fencing came down. So those are the concerns I got when I was talking to people in the neighborhood since last June. Um, if you want those photos to uh, come into the record, you could bring them up to okay. the, the staff. Yeah. Do you need them to be addressed as far as the address of each one? Uh, that's up to you. Okay. Um, but if you get them to staff, we can. Okay. Could I do that towards the end of the meeting today? Sure. That's okay. fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The next up would be Dr. Lawrence Sarah. It's uh, Sousa. Oh, wow, got that wrong. That's okay. Um, I think one of our biggest concern, and I'm here with Don Peters, who's the owner of uh, 329 uh, Beaumont, is the parcel 327 has been tried to be built on twice. 325 uh, is all, also tried to be built on twice. We've seen Coral Ridge, that has already collapsed. 325 is, was ex excavated. There was no um, performance bond on that. There was a completion bond, so they just abandoned it. So now it's just sitting there as an eyesore with uh, garbage on it. And then 327 has been tried to be developed on twice, and unfortunately Don had to live through the, the first one where the, uh, the hillside was collapsing under his house. And uh, when the, uh, the owner abandoned it, he basically uh, put in subfill. And isn't there like, uh, you know, uh, telephone poles and stuff street like that, cars. street cars and stuff like that that have been thrown into that, that thing. And we're just, the whole neighborhood is just so concerned 
about the whole hillside and just the just what's been approved along that hillside with no real integrity to the engineering or the you know the the process and uh, you know I'm really concerned about Don. I'm concerned about people above you know on on the top and uh, you know we know that the uh, you know the, uh, the 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 fault line runs through there. We know that the geological um, soil conditions there are known for landslides and you know unless we have some kind of guarantee that these guys are gonna you know if they're gonna build they got to build it they got to complete it they can't abandon this stuff and just leave it there to, to allow for it to just basically sit and be an eyesore build the improvement show us the engineering show us that you can do this stuff um, but you know we're not convinced that anybody who wants to do projects there it's nothing less than just speculative you know developments that um, that they're just trying to, to shop you know in the market because the market's so hot right now that you know we just don't see the engineering we don't see the integrity we don't see the soil we don't see the, the you know the uh, commitment you know the capital to complete these projects um, going forward um, because we've seen them twice you know they tried to do uh, 327 twice they tried to do 325 they want to do 323 and 300 corals been sitting there that should have been red tagged you know years ago for never you know being completed um, you know we sent out the uh, petitions 26 have been signed by the uh, by the community uh, we put everybody on notice we wrote everybody letters uh, we did everything we could to bring our concerns and it, I, I don't think it's just us in our community from what we've heard from others that it's basically the same in other communities within Pacifica. Thank you. Okay, I don't have any additional speaker cards up here, so I'm gonna close the public hearing. I'm gonna bring this item back to the applicant. If the applicant wishes to speak to whatever was due to the issues that were raised in the public comment. Thanks, thanks for allowing me to speak again. Um, we, or the property owner, 327 Beaumont, has a very um, confident that he's gonna build the property. And ahead of time, we did our research. We have a soil report that was done, and I believe we turned it into the, to the department. And a, a showing plans, like I said, a soldier pile um, plans and a retaining wall plans were done ahead of time to the integrity and make sure that we, we can build this not just you know getting approval and then we don't know what we're getting ourselves into therefore our owners also had went out and get quote estimate to get um how much it is cost for him to build this how much it will, will it cost for him to excavate build all this so build all this um, pi, um piers that need to be drilled he we did all this in in knowing that we're gonna what we're get ourselves into and we want to build this and um we, the design were basically revised it twice. One, the first revision was for um, the trees. Um, the trees was actually planted by 329 Beaumont, but it grew into 327 Beaumont. And we understand the, the, the heritage tree and we understand the importance of the tree. Therefore, we the, redesigned the property, the retaining walls to, to stay away from the tree, to protect the tree. Um, we also have an arborist report that was done for tree protection plants, and that to show you how um, how much of a how much of a um, determination that we want to build this. And and in the short notes, and um, the the property owner actually um, has always expressed his his, um, his concern about the Jason River, how they built their home. So he, he knows the property well, he knows this lot well, he been here, so he wants to build this the right way. Um, and if we're gonna leave the lots undeveloped, I mean, the concerns about the lot is, it, it's, it's, it's hillside, is dangerous, and it's gonna fall, but if we're not if never gonna develop it, it's, they would leave it like that, then I don't see the reasoning behind it. Why don't you improve it and make it safe by be providing a building permit, and and so we can build it based on what the building department recommendate and require, so that it will be safer for everyone else, rather than just leave it there and just have it a vacant lot, which I, I don't think is the best way and best outcome. 
Thank you. Thanks. I had a quick question. How long has the current property owner owned this lot? Um, I believe for since I believe it's in 19, 1990s, I think like 95 or so. I don't have that exact number, sir, but it's more than about tw 20 years. And I did, the property owner just explained this in the past. The, re the first, the first um, application, the first permit that he pulled, he had a partner. And because of financial issues and the partnership was never fell apart, be oh, fell apart because of that partnership. Now he's solely owner of the property and he's building this for his family. And we work tremendous amount of, um, we, we invest a tremendous amount of time on this four plans with him and his family so to make sure this is what they want to, as a retirement home and for him to build his family. And so he will, he will live in here. And I don't, I don't think he wants to build something for his family to live in that's not safe for himself or for the surrounding neighbors. Okay, I think I've got a couple more questions for you. Commissioner Neblin? Uh, that wasn't me. Oh, that's not Commissioner Clifford, sorry. Um, who did the soils uh, report for the, um, the shoring up? It's um, Frankly and Association. Say that again, please. Fra frankly. Pricely. Frank. 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 Oh, right. thank so, you. Sorry, sorry. Uh, and do we have a copy of that uh, shoring plan in our, our packet here? Uh, yes, it is uh, under grading uh, and uh, retaining wall plans. It's towards the end of the project plans. Okay, the thank you very much. All right, uh, Commissioner Rubenstein. Um, in your earlier comments, I thought I heard you say that the shoring and excavation would be a million dollars. Is that right? Yes. Just that alone, so that that's that show you how he he went out. Uh, the the property owner actually went out and, and have a couple quote and see how much it got cost to to build this home. So he we he done his his research and we done what we need to do and we know what we're getting ourselves into before he built this. So I just want to let you know we're confident that we're going to build this and this is what he wants to do. Commissioner Neville. Thank you. I guess. I don't know if this is the right time to ask you or not. It's a question for staff, so is this appropriate for me to direct I think it so. to them? Sure. Thank you. I, you know, one of the concerns that's been raised is sort of this sort of notion of what do we do if we get into a project some some portion of the way and uh, uh, financial uh, issues arise, or some for some other reason the project isn't completed. Um, and concerns the community has about having a you know a half dug out hillside or, or some variation on that theme. What are the remedies that uh, the city has in a, in a context like that? Of course, uh, in public projects you've got you know, well maybe in other kinds of projects you've got performance bonds and, and, and things like that that to uh, ensure that projects actually get done. But uh, or at a bare minimum you're not dealing with a, a half completed you know eyesore or dangerous situation. But what would be the city's um, remedy or what would they do in a situation like that? Uh, thank you. Uh, this is Senior Planner Christian Murdoch. Uh, I think as was explained by Director Wormeister at an earlier public hearing on this project, the standard procedure would be to follow the city's code enforcement process. So yes. first to uh, indicate to the property owner that they've created an unsafe condition, uh, potentially, depending on the timing, violated the conditions of approval of this particular application, and to then pursue the um, code enforcement and nuisance abatement process uh, through to its conclusion up to and potentially including uh, in rare cases where the city has to render the site safe and then uh, seek recovery of the costs from the property owner. Excellent. Thanks for recapping that. And I would just like to add that <coughs> on a project of this scale, this is a type of building permit that we would not be issuing to um, somebody without a licensed contractor, general contractor who, who under their license is responsible for even, you know, to, to leaving a work site safe even if it's not complete um, because of various reasons and but it, it should at least be safe and uh, I would also add that typically projects of this size the applicant is getting a construction loan yep. so I think the um, although we're not priv as a city we're not necessarily privy to all of the business um, business side of things but typically their their funding is a little bit more secure than if you're kind of DIYing Right. a small addition or right. something to your house. Thank you for that information. Thanks. Commissioner Kresge. Yeah, I think this was discussed in the last hearing, but if you could remind me, what is the major obstacle here in getting a you know, independent study to 
analyze the cumulative effect of these multiple excavations that we're talking about here on this hillside? Uh, so I think the, the, the problem is, is that we're not looking at them as a project as a, as a whole. That was done you know, when, when the area was subdivided and it was you know, determined that there were legal lots to sell and to develop and the zoning is mm. single family. And so therefore, at this point, we're um, required to analyze them you know, lot by lot. I think I would add, uh, we believe we've had an engineer look at the situation and determine which excavations are likely to have an impact. And it was that engineer's opinion that it was this project site and the immediately adjacent site and not others beyond it. And so I would argue that we have had an analysis performed of the impact of these potentially multiple concurrent excavations and narrowed the universe of potentially hazardous uh, concurrent excavations to this site and the site next door at 325 Beaumont. Okay, thank you. Hey, um, is there a way to condition the approval here or um, otherwise do this where we look at it in a year from now and see if things are progressing and things are moving? So tell me, tell me more about what your goal would be so I could help you with it. Just so spot. that we don't have an unfinished lot a year from now, nothing's happening, nothing's moving, a year passes and so are you thinking that you're concerned about um, a year where things are, have started but they're progressing slowly or a year and nothing's happened? Um, More of a year where grading has started, earth moving started and then it stops. Kind of like what the neighbors were talking about. Abandonment. Abandonment, right. 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 Um, if you guys would, if the commission would like to continue their conversation, I can kind of sidebar with our legal counsel here and get back to you? Yes, okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll take a little break for a moment. Um, stay tuned. Sure, no one. Uh, to the chair, I, I don't know if this would be an appropriate time to maybe, you know, bring things back to the commission. I know there's some conversation about the possibility of a condition, but I, I you know, subject to a condition, I, I think I, I'd be prepared to share my perspective on. No, certainly. Project. Yeah, yeah, let's keep things moving. All right, I'm going to bring this back to the commission. And and, and I guess what I'd say, uh, chair, and to 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 my colleagues, is I'm. I'm I'm glad we got a chance to get this additional information. I think it's been helpful. Um, uh, having received it, I, I'm in support of the project at this point, uh, subject to conditions that might uh, uh, be uh, uh, sort of feasible uh, along the lines you were kind of suggesting to staff, but uh, uh, subject to that, I'd be prepared to uh, move forward with support of the project. Thank you. Commissioner Clifford. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think that uh, depending on whether or not we can have any additional condition, condition on timing of, uh, of it coming back. I, I too am uh, in support of the project uh, as presented today. I'm, I, I think I was the one that raised the biggest stink about the trees in the past and that, that issue seems to have been yes. settled. Um, so, um, and that also means that the excavation is actually going to be a little further away from the existing home because the retaining wall is being moved, moved over a little bit to accommodate that. So um, I'm fairly comfortable with that. Of course, performance is, is, is another issue and they clearly have had some bad things in the past happen. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Thank you. <coughs> Commissioner Kresge. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with that. I think um, I'm, I would like to hear what staff members' uh, ideas about um, uh, not a, some sort of completion bond, I guess, for this home. Making sure it's not abandoned. I'm, I'm curious to hear that feedback. And Commissioner Rubenstein. 
Oh, I agree with you guys. I, I, I'm, we're relying on the effectiveness of the engineering and the soil grading, so we haven't even considered the home itself. I think fundamentally, I agree with the applicant. They're gonna improve the property so it's safer. I mean, a naked hillside can slide, so. Yeah, and I'm, I'm generally in agreement as well. I think the one thing I was concerned about was considering it's the same owner since the 90s when we've had all these abandonment issues and so no uh, yeah I just wanted to trust but verify um, one if I may one concern yes. that I have with um, putting a condition on this project is that the issues with abandonment that we've heard are not necessarily related to this project and this applicant it's related to surrounding properties and so I would be uncomfortable with imposing something on this project based off of what we've heard with surrounding projects that are not related to the instant project before you tonight. That's a good point. I, it, Mr. Neblin. Yeah, Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. I, it, one piece I was trying to understand is issuing the building permits a certain period of time on, in which you have to actually start work. I, 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 I gather, I can't remember if it's a year or two years or um, and then from there, I mean, is there a, a requirement that the work uh, continue apace? Uh, if, you, if you start and then stop for some significant amount of time, does that have a, an impact on the validity of the building permit? And if so, what are the, the, the rules that surround that? Yes, so a building permit is valid for one year now. It used to be six months. And once, um, once a permit has been pulled and com construction has commenced every six months, there needs to be a progress inspection. And if you don't get satisfactory uh, sort of a, a results in, in connection with the progress inspection, uh, and, and I take it the standard is just some reasonable progress being made on the, uh, right. on the work? That's correct. So, so in some sense, perhaps that's part of functionally what we're concerned about, maybe just the the way the building permit process works anyway, it's sort of got that kind of a uh, uh, fail safe built into it. That's a good point. Well, thank you. I uh, appreciate you exploring this on, during the sidebar. Um, okay, Commissioner Clifford. Um, I wanted to mention that since 1995, when the, the last problem came up, uh, the um, the building department has gone through major changes. There was a point in time there when we had one person who was the building official, he was the building inspector, he was the plan checker, <laughs> and quite frankly, he was overwhelmed. Uh, now we have building inspector inspectors, we have a plan checking uh, company, uh, and we have a building official that comes out from that plan checking company. So it's a much better staffed situation for the building department in terms of actually getting out there and doing a good job of inspecting. <coughs> so I want to want to make sure that the public knows that things aren't the same as they used to be. Very true, Commissioner Rubenstein. I would add, you know, if it's truly a million dollar project just for the, that's a, that's a lot of money, so it has to be substantial to spend a million dollars to build a house just on the foundation and the grading. That's a good point. Good point. Okay, Commissioner Neblin. I'd like to make a motion, uh, if, assuming there's anybody else who wants to comment, and the motion would be that the Planning Commission find the project is exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act approved specific plan SP16617 by adopting the resolution included as attachment B to the staff report in including conditions of approval in Exhibit A of the resolution and incorporate all maps and testimony into the record by reference. All right, we've had a motion. Uh, Commissioner Clifford. I'll second that. We've had a motion and a second. Please vote. Okay, that project has been approved. Anyone aggrieved by the action of the Planning Commission has 10 calendar days to appeal the decision in writing to the City Council. <coughs> All right, moving on to a site development permit and a use permit for construction of two two-story and five 
three-story townhomes ranging from approximately 220 to 280 square feet in floor area, subdivision of airspace to create condominiums, and removal of heritage trees on a vacant 18,750 square foot lot located at 1335 Adobe Drive. The recommended action tonight is to approve as conditioned. Staff report, please. Thank you, Chair. Senior Planner Christian Murdoch. The item before you relates to a condominium subdivision and development permits for construction of seven townhomes on an 18,750 square foot or 0.43 acre lot. The townhomes would range in size from 2,280 to 2,834 square feet in floor area. The units would be arranged, arranged in three buildings consisting of one, two, and four townhomes, respectively. Two of the units would be two stories in height and the remainder of the units would be three stories in height. The two-story portions of the buildings would be just over 20 feet tall and would transition to approximately 33 feet tall throughout the three-story portions. Each unit would include a two-car garage to provide parking for residents with additional guest parking provided on site. The exterior building materials would consist of a composite shingle roof, cement vertical board and batten siding, cement horizontal lap siding, cement plaster, copper shingle siding, vinyl windows with two by four trim, and wood fences, balcony, railings, and trellises. Site work would involve minor grading of the largely flat site as well as proposed removal of four heritage trees. With respect to the heritage trees, the commission will find at the dais uh, a revised sheet A 2.0. There was a printing problem and the uh, printed versions of the plans you received uh, omitted a clear depiction of where the heritage trees are located and proposed for removal. Um, that was corrected in the digital. Sorry, version. can you? To the extent we're having discussions in the back, can you move them uh, outside or take it down a notch because it's bleeding into the microphones on the public hearing? Thank you very much. Sorry, continue. Thank you. Uh, so uh, revised printed sheet A 2.0, the uh, digital version online as well as the reduced size sets should have the correct information and that pertains to the heritage tree removal plan. <coughs> The project would meet or exceed all zoning standards as explained in the staff report. Of note, the project would provide three more guest parking spaces than required by the Pacifica Municipal Code. The applicant included, three, uh, included these extra parking spaces in response to feedback he received at a community meeting held with neighbors earlier in the project review process. To consider the potential environmental impacts associated with the proposed project as required by the California Environmental Quality Act, the city prepared an initial study. Particular consideration during the environmental review was given to the project site's location adjacent to the Sanchez Adobe at 1000 Lindemar Boulevard. And any potential impacts to subsurface cultural resources or tribal cultural resources which could result from the project. More fully discussed in section five of the initial study, the analysis included detailed review of records of historic and prehistoric activity in the area, a ground penetrating radar survey of the site and selective excavation of small areas requiring further investigation as a result of the ground penetrating radar survey. The city provided a 30 day public comment period on the initial study during which it received four public comments, three of which were submitted by members of the public and one which was submitted by a public agency, the Native American Heritage Commission. The city prepared responses to the comments as detailed in attachment D to the staff report. The public comments received led to one change to a proposed mitigation measure included in the draft initial study as indicated in the errata sheet in attachment E to the staff report. The resulting change to mitigation measure V-1 cultural resources was necessary to correctly indicate that a 48 hour period applies to completion of the Native American most likely descendant notification process. The combined result of staff's work and the public comments received was a conclusion that the project would result in potentially significant impacts to biological resources, cultural resources, geology and soils, hydrology and water quality, noise, transportation and circulation, and tribal cultural resources. Further analysis concluded, however, that based on substantial evidence, each of these identified impacts could be suitably mitigated to less than significant levels by incorporating the mitigation measures described in the Mitigation Monitoring and Reporting Program, or MMRP, included as attachment F to the staff report and proposed to be included with any potential project approval. With respect to cultural and tribal cultural resources, the analysis concluded that the proposed project would not be likely to have a significant impact based on the proposed areas of disturbance and depths of excavation needed to construct the project. Accordingly, the city has proposed to adopt a mitigated negative declaration to satisfy the requirements of the California Environmental Quality Act. Staff's assessment of the proposed project is that it would provide needed housing within the city. The specific development proposed by the applicant is at the low end of the range of density permissible on the site, uh, according to the general plan. 
would, as conditioned, meet or exceed all applicable development policies and standards contained in the general plan and Pacifica Municipal Code, would include a high quality architectural design and would use high quality building materials, would be designed and constructed as conditioned with appropriate consideration of, of surrounding existing land uses, would preserve heritage trees on this project site to the maximum extent practicable, and would not result in any significant and unavoidable environmental impacts. Thus, it is staff's opinion that the project would be a favorable addition to the neighborhood and recommends approval of the project as provided in the proposed motion. Staff is available to answer any of the commission's questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions for staff? Okay, I don't. No oh, question. Yeah, Commissioner um, Kresge. Can you remind me again what is on the site right now? What's the, uh, is it just the grass and dirt and wood chips right now? Uh, that generally uh, summarizes the existing condition. There are small dirt piles okay. that have been placed there from other minor excavation work, and there are a number of trees, including, I believe, seven heritage trees on the site. Okay, so it's a, a permeable surface right now. Correct. And can you estimate uh, how much of that of the surface area is going to be replaced with non-permeable, like concrete type surface, like a total percentage on the property? Uh, I may have that information, but it'll take me a moment to uh, to pull it up. Yeah, so I guess my, my um, thinking is, so we're going to remove uh, six or seven heritage, or six or seven trees from the property. We're going to be uh, transforming it to mostly non-permeable uh, surface. So um, my question is about the stormwater management on the, uh, on the uh, site, and what are we doing to... Uh, Ensure that is good. Well, the uh, project is subject to the city's stormwater control ordinance and provision C3 of the countywide municipal regional re municipal regional permit or MR MRP. Uh, so many acronyms f uh, of the uh, National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Program. Uh, what that means is uh, new developments like this that are converting. Uh, particular amount of surface area to impermeable surface, a need to uh, comply with technical standards related to the capture and treatment of that stormwater. Uh, it's, uh, this project has been reviewed in the initial study, uh, including on section nine, hydrology and water quality for compliance with the applicable provisions. And uh, it, it was the uh, city's expert opinion that the project was designed to comply with those applicable standards. Okay. Okay, Commissioner Clifford. Um, I had um, two things. One's just a little bit of cleanup. On packet page 103, uh, down where we're listing the trees to be removed, uh, tree number two, uh, Don, the Don Redwood, the three is in poor health. If we could just make sure that in the final, uh, uh, minutes that are, are copied out that that's changed to tree. <laughs> and uh, the other is is that uh, the uh, I'm very happy with what staff has, has done in terms staff and the applicant have done in terms of the archaeological uh, needs for this project. It, I'm very, very happy with that and I'll end it with that for now. Okay, I don't see any more questions for staff. At this point, I'd like to invite the applicant up. You'll have 10 minutes to present your project. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Tony Pontelioni with CODIS Pontelioni Architects. We are the project architects for the uh, project. Um, the project consists of seven townhomes uh, on a pr well, with a central private driveway. Um, if you take a look, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, this is an aerial view of the lot. Um, the project is located just off the corner of Lindemar and uh, uh, Boulevard and uh, Adobe <coughs> Drive. Uh, you see it's the green area in the center there. Um, the property is just west of the Sanchez Adobe Park. The lot is 125 feet wide by 150 feet, mm -hmm. uh, 18,750 square feet. And there's a three-foot change of elevation from Adobe back towards the uh, rear lot line. So it's a fairly gradual slope over 150 feet. Next slide, please. 
Uh, the neighborhood is a mixed character of numerous multifamily buildings, uh, ranging in two stories in height, apartment buildings, as well as uh, single family homes as you drive down closer towards Rosita Road. Uh, next slide. Here's some photographs of the site, uh, various views. Uh, next photograph, please, next slide. This is looking from Adobe, looking at our lot and the apartment complex to the right of us. Next plan, please. This is a site plan. Um, as uh, staff mentioned, um, as you enter Adobe Court, uh, at the bottom of the page is Adobe Drive. As you enter the court, there are three townhouses on the left, two and then a space and then a single home. And then on your right, there's four townhouses. The private driveway is directly in the center. Um, to answer one of the commissioner's concerns about impervious surfaces, the whole driveway will be impervious uh, uh, interlocking blocks, so the, uh, the rain would pour right through. It's not asphalt or concrete or anything like that. So uh, we also have uh, four storm, uh, storm water uh, planters that during the rains, uh, the water will be uh, submit, uh, you know, rushed into those areas and you, uh, stored in those areas until time where they're supposed to come out. So uh, we've uh, accounted for that, and that's in, I don't know if you have sheet one of one from our KCA civil engineers. Uh, you can take, it says uh, stormwater control plan, stormwater management plan. It has the square footages of the permeable surfaces and the not permeable surfaces. It's towards the back, I think, uh, of your uh, handout. Um, Okay, uh, the code requires us to have a 15-foot setback in the front and rear, as well as five set foot setbacks on the side, which we provided. Um, the setbacks include private and common open spaces, the stormwater flow through planters, and landscape areas. Next slide, please. Uh, this is sort of a, a, a 3D uh, image of the uh, adobe court itself, the entrance to the court, and the two-story homes uh, that face onto Adobe Drive. Next slide, please. This is the first floor plan. The all the units are family size units. Um, the, the actual, the, the two townhomes facing Adobe Drive are three bedrooms and two and a half baths of approximately 16, 1,700 square foot of habitable space. I, that's not including the garage, just habitable square feet. Square footage. The other five are uh, three to four bedrooms, three bath units, and approximately 2,100 square feet of habitable square footage. Uh, each unit has a two car garage and uh, one or two bedrooms on the first floor. Uh, in our meetings with the major, uh, ma uh, sorry, in our meetings with the neighbors, they mentioned the lack of parking. Uh, originally, we had only one off street parking spot or guest parking spot. And the neighbors expressed to us that, you know, if you drive there at 5 o'clock in the evening, you got to drive around forever to find a parking spot or you park two blocks away. So what we ended up was adding three more off-street parking spots to our design, okay? Uh, two of them are on the left. As you drive in, you see a, there's a handicap unloading area. The first one has to be a handicapped unloading. Um, and then there's two on the left. And if you drive straight to the back, there's two more at the rear. Um, in all, we will end up with 18 off-street parking spots for seven units. Next slide, please. Next slide shows the second floor plan, which is the living, dining, uh, open uh, living spaces for the units, as well as some bedrooms and private decks. And then the next slide is the third floor. Now, these are the units. The third floor are tucked towards the rear of the, of the building. Uh, they're just sort of pop-outs, not the entire square footage of the footprint on the second floor. Uh, we set them back to uh, reduce the mass from the street uh, and from people driving by so they don't have to see the third floor. It's not that prominent. And also, we shape the roofs to minimize the sun and, and you know, shadowing of our neighbors. Um, next slide, please. This is the uh, north and west elevation. The west elevation is the upper elevation that faces onto Adobe Drive. Um, it's two stories, there are two units. Uh, there are two stories, approximately 20 feet in height. 
They have bay windows on each side of the driveway and vine color trellises to articulate the entries. Uh, the massing is articulated with a, vi a variety of finished materials, projecting bays and, and uh, trellises, and the hips roofs. Uh, the north elevation is the one further below, which is fronts to the neighbor to our, uh, to the uh, left of us, the single family home. Next slide, please. This is the interior courtyard. Uh, the upper one is the four units. On the right hand side as you drive in, you see the garage doors. Again, there's a lot of material uh, play, playing back and forth. There's a copper bay window that projects out over toward each of the entry doors to, to indicate where the entries are. Um, and then below it is the north elevation, the other side, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the other elevation, the other court with the uh, two on the left and the one on the right and the uh, off street parking spot in, in, right in between the two. Uh, next slide, please. This is the south elevation. The upper elevation faces the apartment building to our right, the two story apartment building. And the one on the uh, east elevation faces the Sanchez Adobe uh, Park. Uh, next slide is a, a section showing the sloping roofs on the third stories and how they step up from the side property lines and the driveway in the middle. Again, garage and bedrooms on the first floor, living, dining, and kitchen areas on the second floor. Next is a landscape plan. Um, this is a proposed planting scheme. We're proposing to pr plant 18 new trees and a variety of shrubs, grasses, and vines throughout the site. Uh, the site currently, next slide, the site currently has seven trees. Uh, trees, uh, you see the footprints of our building uh, dotted, and then there's um, trees one, two, five, and six will be removed. Uh, they're also shown dotted, and the three trees in the back, number three, four, and seven, will remain as part of our landscape scheme. Uh, the total am amount of trees when the project will be complete will be 21. Um, next si slide, please. This is, again, the uh, view from Adobe looking directly into the project. The two uh, units fronting Adobe um, are two-story townhouses and the other five are behind, behind them. You see the white pop-outs of the, uh, of the uh, master bedrooms for the rear units. Uh, here you also notice the front landscaping uh, and the front of the property, as well as the bay windows and the trellises at the entrances. Uh, next slide, please. This is uh, the view as you're driving down Adobe um, uh, from uh, Lindemar. And again, you start to see that from the street, it will be two stories, but you'll notice that the small pop-outs coming up from the t third floor uh, at further <coughs> into the site. Uh, that concludes my presentation. Uh, the project sponsors and I are here to answer any questions you may have. And it's 10 minutes on the dot. Wow. <laughs> well done. All right. Um, any questions for the applicant? All right. I don't see any at the moment. Um, I'm going to open it up to public comment. I have one card. And if anyone else wants to speak, please fill out a card, bring it up to staff. But as it stands, I have one speaker, that's Tim Flaherty. Good evening. I live in Pacifica up off of Fassler, and I'm in favor of this project. It's less dense than most of the adjoining properties. Um, it adds two dedicated parking spaces per unit which is double what most of the other apartment buildings on that block have. I think it's an attractive project and will add to the neighborhood. It will also uh, add an additional approximately $800,000 in property taxes that the state and, and the city can share, whichever way they divvy it up. And, um, and it, you know, like I said, it has less density than most of the other neighboring projects on that side of the, on that west side of the block. So again, I'm in favor of that project. I think it adds um, a lot more than it detracts from the neighborhood and it gives Pacificans a chance and opportunity to, you know, better their housing. Most of the stock here are 1950s, three bedroom, one bath, mold ridden homes. Some families that have larger families, they want a place to uh, raise their kids in Pacifica, but they just need more room. And some of them don't want to go through the uh, 
long time planning of putting additions on their house. So this way they can, you know, buy a larger unit and vacate one that some another family can purchase and move into the area. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I don't have any other speaker cards up here, so I'm gonna close public hearing. Um, if the applicant wishes to come up and speak more to the project, they're welcome to respond to the comments, but you don't feel compelled. Okay. Um, at this point, then, I'm going to bring it back to the Commission for Deliberation. Mr. Clifford. Well, I want to start out by saying that I was here the last time a project was approved for this lot, and this one is by far much better, much, much better. Uh, it's. Uh, I, I'm going to be voting for it. I, I like the design. My only concerns originally were the uh, archaeological uh, portion of of the of the lot itself, and that seems to be uh, very well addressed. So I want to want to say that I I will be voting for this. Okay, uh, Commissioner Nevelin. Well, I'll, I'll echo the comments of my colleague. Uh, Commissioner Clifford, I, I think it's a well-conceived project. It's uh, attractive. Uh, I think a lot of thought has gone into uh, sort of addressing concerns about mass bulk, uh, the way it might, uh, you know, look from the street. Um, appreciate having the really good renderings and the really nice walkthrough uh, of, of the project. I thought that was very helpful. Um, the consideration of the parking and uh, the, the challenges that, you know, we, we deal with, uh, with with respect to parking, I appreciate the way that's been addressed as well. So. I'm, I'm in favor of the project. All right, Commissioner Rubenstein. Yeah, I concur. I'm in favor of this project. I think it's the right housing stock for this area, and I thought the presentation was excellent. Okay, uh, Commissioner Kraske. Yeah, I think I, I'm also in favor of the, the project. I think we definitely need more housing. Um, I do like the fact that uh, there will be some uh, permeable interlocking uh, pavers that will reduce the amount of uh, non-permeable surface area. Um, so I am in favor of, uh, of this project overall. Um, yeah. And uh, as for me, yeah, it seems to meet all the planning and zoning requirements in this town, plus adds more parking than is required, which is a plus, although I am do uh, understand the uh, neighbor's concerns that this probably will add to uh, additional parking burden even though it, it's adding more parking spaces but it it does meet the requirements so um, anyone Commissioner Nevelin Actually, if uh, somebody's got it handy in front of them, I'm happy to make the motion. It turns out I've got it electronically. I'm going to have to find it. Okay. So Jeopardy, you know, get it down. <laughs> if someone's got it handy, well, give me a second. I'll, I'll All find right. it. Back at page 105. Mm. All right. Well, I'm prepared to make a motion then that the Planning Commission adopt the attached resolution, including conditions of approval in Exhibit A and the mitigation monitoring and reporting program included as Exhibit B to adopt the mitigated negative declaration and MMRP for the project to approve the site development permit PSD 8015, use permit UP 6615 and subdivision SUB 22715 and to authorize removal of heritage trees and to incorporate all documents, maps and testimony into the record by reference. Commissioner Rubenstein. I'll second the motion. Okay, we've had a motion and a second, please vote. Okay, and that passes unanimous, unanimously. Congratulations, you have an approved project. Anyone aggrieved by the action of the Planning Commission has 10 calendar days to appeal the decision in writing to the City Council. Okay, that ends our public hearings for tonight and moving on to communications, uh, commission communications. Okay, we're gonna move on to staff communications. Just wanted to update the commission on a couple things coming up. First, council goal setting is this Saturday, March 9th. So more to come on uh, on that. 
Uh, and next uh, Monday, the 11th, the City Council will have on their agenda appointments to commissions and committees. So there'll be some appointments to the Planning Commission made, and uh, they'll also be hearing the annual report on the housing element. So I just wanted to let you know. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think we are at a point where someone would like to make the all-important motion. Commissioner Clifford. I move that we adjourn. All right. Commissioner Neblin. I'll second that motion. I've had a motion and a second. Please vote. That passes unanimously and the meeting is over. Thank you. Excellent. <coughs> oh, Jason, hello. Hello. All right. Pretty soon. Pretty soon.